Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. What will be the trend for the cattle markets as we head towards the end of 2015? We'll have the outlook from Cattle Facts, and we'll share how NCBA is working to grow consumer demand for beef. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. There's both good and bad news in a ruling late last month from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The decision not to list the greater sage grouse as an endangered species was welcomed by ranchers who have worked to restore and protect millions of acres of sage grouse habitat in the western United States. However, the Obama administration still plans to move forward with restrictive land use plans that would sharply limit and control grazing in the West. NCBA and the Public Lands Council are adamantly opposed to these plans, which impede on conservation efforts and range management practices already in place. You can help in the fight against regulations that threaten cattle producers and their livelihood by joining NCBA. It's easy to do. Just visit the website beefusa.org and click Become a Member, or you can call 1-866-USA-BEEF to join cattlemen and women across the country who are supporting and protecting our way of life. We turn now to an update on the cattle markets and the outlook for beef demand through the end of this year. Here to share some insights on the market is Lance Zimmerman of Cattle Facts. Lance, this cattle market has been tough. We've really broke to the downside in a big way. Tell us what's happening. Well, you know, really I think what's shocking folks today is the magnitude of the current break. And for the last 10 years, we've heard a lot of rumbling out there in the industry that is the cattle cycle dead? Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to realize is the cattle cycle was never really dead. You know, that traditional ebb and flow of prices along with the ebb and flow in supply still existed over the last 10 years. It was just muted through a historic drought, you know, a hundred year drought cycle that we just went through as well as record high grain prices. And so the magnitude of this current break is probably a shock, but we shouldn't be uh, thinking that this is uncharted territory, that this is something we've gone through in the past. We just got to reacclimate ourselves to what that really means from a market standpoint. So what do you see for the rest of 2015? Yeah, as we look at 2015, I think what we need to realize is the futures markets, they're anticipatory. And so they're going to price in just like they priced in really extreme price highs as we looked at first quarter of this year and fourth quarter of last year. Now they're pricing in really extreme lows. And so it's our expectation at Cattlefax that because we've broken these prices in most classes of cattle, 20% from the early year highs, that we're likely pricing in an extreme low. That's going to last not just through this year, Year, but likely the next couple of years. And we're going to rally from here into the spring, and then we'll still have our traditional seasonal market factors where we have spring highs and fall lows mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of these different classes of cattle. You know, I'm amazed at the retail market right now. I've seen some hamburgers high as $5 a pound, and I guess I would ask you, are we hitting a retail price that is dampening consumer demand for beef? I think that's a good question for us to ask as an industry because we are probably the most expensive protein in the meat case outside of seafood. Mm -hmm. But I think we're seeing a lot of research that says, yeah, beef is expensive, but it's worth it. Uh, there's research that came out of Kansas State University this year that said that consumer sensitivity to beef prices isn't what it used to be even 10 or 15 years ago based on prior research. There is data from the University of Missouri that said as we increase the quality grade in the beef that we're producing, again, that consumer's price sensitivity to that beef decreases. Mm. And in addition to that, I think that a lot of the data we're seeing, whether it's a consumer sentiment index, consumer comfort index, a lot of them are saying that the consumer's telling us that they're better off today than they were at the same point last year or even 2013, mm. and clearly better than they were in 08 eight, nine, and 10 coming out of the recession. That is interesting. So tell us this, how can we go from an incredible high in the cattle market to, to a point where consecutive years are so different? I mean, what would you tell producers in that regard? 
you know, 2014 and even early 2015 was really the perfect storm for cattle producers. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at a point where we were ramping up expansion efforts hardcore. Uh, coming out of 2013, we started retaining heifers. In the spring and summer 2014, we cut back cull cow rates. And broiler and, and pork production really hadn't increased yet. Uh, they were dealing with some production struggles of their own. And so we had a consumer that was just wanting protein mm -hmm. and couldn't get enough of it on the domestic market. Now we're in a situation where pork production record high, broiler production's record high, and beef production's still at 20-year lows, but we can sense the expansion on the horizon. We see the growing cow numbers, we see the extreme reductions in the percent of heifers in slaughter, and the futures market's telling us, hey, let's pump the brakes a little bit on this mm. expansion. Let's make sure that we have some demand base still around us after going through these extreme high prices, and then the market will give us that indication of how long we continue these expansion efforts. Clearly, from a historic standpoint, these prices are still quite good, but what would you tell our viewers who might be watching and are a little worried about what they see unfolding in the marketplace right now? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that they need to recognize is coming off of these price highs, the industry has the most equity at risk than they've ever had from a dollar per head standpoint. Mm -hmm as an industry. And so that means taking caution, but that also means that there's a lot of opportunity amid this volatility. Mm -hmm. You know, take opportunities when you see cycle highs or price highs in a particular year to explore all your marketing options. Maybe that's forward contracting, maybe it's video auction markets, maybe it's participating in futures and options. Mm -hmm. but, but utilize those tools to get out in front of some of these trends to try and preserve that equity that's been built into the market over the last five years. Great advice and always great perspective from the Cattle Facts team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. If you want to keep up on all the latest news in the cattle industry, just visit NCBA's website at beefusa.org. And for more expert analysis on the cattle markets, please be sure to visit cattlefacts.com. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll tell you how NCBA is working to grow consumer demand for beef. We'll also share some of the key strategies that can help you keep your calves healthy all through the fall and winter. Plus, we'll see environmental stewardship in action on an award-winning Montana cattle ranch. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. It's that time of year, falling leaves, hay fields, and the smell of sweet diesel. Here up for fall with John Deere Equipment. Test drive all the latest equipment at our Drive Green event. You'll get coupons worth $500 off John Deere compact and utility tractors, plus $250 off a wide range of turf equipment. And the first 50 people to attend will receive a limited edition John Deere camo hat. Go to johndeere.com slash drive green to find an event near you. Drive green, be there. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts from Cabela's. We have an exclusive membership program um, that allows members of NCBA to buy our Cabela's co-branded gift cards at a 15% discount. Use gift cards towards Cabela's purchases either online, through the catalog, or in-store. NCBA members can also purchase logo apparel from Cabela's at a discount. And we do all of the NCBA's merchandise through the website. In that program, you can receive up to a 30% discount through the NCBA site. And we have state association logos, uh, all the Beef USA logos. We can use those to outfit uh, you guys working on the ranch. Cabela's is proud to be a sponsor of NCBA and all their member base. 15% off gift cards to Cabela's plus savings on apparel is just one of the great deals you get as an NCBA member. Join today at beefusa.org. Welcome back. One of NCBA's most important objectives is growing beef demand, both here in the U.S. and overseas. 
Joining us now to talk about these efforts is Kendall Frazier, Interim Chief Executive Officer of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Kendall, we just had a good discussion with Lance Zimmerman of Cattle Facts, and I was asking him a little bit about consumer demand for beef. From your seat in the bleachers, how do you think consumer demand is looking right now for beef? Well, I think it's good. Obviously, we've had some fall in the cattle market, a dramatic decline in cattle prices for the cattle producers. But demand at retail and food service cabin is still very strong. And as one of the primary contractors of the beef checkoff, what is NCBA doing to enhance and grow demand for beef? Well, the purpose of the checkoff is to grow long-term demand for beef. However, we do have a sense of urgency regarding what's happened to cattle prices. And we're aware of what's going on with cattlemen across the country right now. So we have stepped up our efforts to reach out to food, our food service and retail mm -hmm. partners, communicating with them about what's going on in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Through the Federation of State Beef Councils, there's a lot of activity going on at the state level, cooking demonstration, mm -hmm. promotion activities going on at the state level. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we're working with our State Beef Council partners on some really enhanced, aggressive promotions in the social media arena mm. designed to reach millennial consumers. Outstanding. And I'm interested, like a lot of producers probably, um, how does fluctuations in markets and, and, and prices change the priorities uh, of you as, a, as a, a, a contractor to the beef checkoff? Well, it gives us a more sense of urgency. Okay. It gives us a more sense of urgency and focus on what we're doing with our food service and retail partners what our state beef council partners are doing to get the word out about the changes in prices. Mm -hmm. Because we are going to start to see retail beef prices drop, mm -hmm. uh, prices at food service drop, and reflect what's happened to the fed cattle market. So it gives us a sense of urgency to step up, focus, and really focus on getting word out about what's going on in the marketplace. And the beef is going to be cheaper for consumers. You know, we've talked a lot the last couple of years in the uh, value that exports bring to uh, the cattle market. Uh, how are exports looking right now, Kendall? Well, it's a tough environment, Kevin. It's tough because of uh, three or four different factors. Probably the most important is that the, the value of the dollar is very strong against other currencies around the world. And our major competitors have a competitive advantage, and that would be the Australians and New Zealanders and some of the Asian markets have a competitive advantage just because our dollar is so strong. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, what we've seen around the global export markets is the financial situation that has occurred in China has spread into the financial markets around the world. And it's putting a lot of pressure on the stock market here in the U.S. and mm -hmm. other markets around the equity markets around the world. So it's putting pressure on beef exports. And beef exports are down this year, year to date, compared to what they were a year ago. And uh, one last question, as you think about uh, viewers watching tonight, what should they expect from their national cattle organization? Well, we're going to be a strong advocate for our product, obviously. We're going to get the word out about that beef prices are going to be lower here uh, as retailers and food service operations start to reflect the decline in fed cattle prices. We're going to aggressively promote our product, and we're going to be a voice for beef. Outstanding. Kendall, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you for all your work. Well, thank you, Kevin. As we talk about working to grow beef demand long term, one of the critical areas is nutrition research and the effort to show that beef is an excellent source of protein and a nutrient dense food. Recently, the Beef Checkoff hosted a media workshop providing an overview of Checkoff funded nutrition research. The goal was to help get the word out about all the good work being done to demonstrate beef's valuable role in a healthy diet. So the Beef Checkoff is hosting a nutrition research media workshop in which we have several uh, members of the trade media coming to find out all the different things that are going on in nutrition research. So far we've talked about um, how beef fits in to healthy diets. We just finished a se seminar on, on pediatrics, which I didn't, wasn't as familiar with, and how that babies, especially breastfed infants, need meat in their diet. And we hear that they don't need it, but the research shows that they do. We talked about how beef has been really given a bad rap. And if you really read, not the top line of studies, but the actual data that, that we're doing the right thing, we're eating the right amounts in this country. I want them to know that beef is a nutrient-dense food, and we define that as it provides more nutrients than calories. And beef 
the nutrients in beef are essential to a balanced diet. It's very hard to get B12 and some B6 if you don't, and iron as far as that goes, if you don't get it from red meat. And that's a message I'd like for them to know. Beef can, lean beef can be part of any well-balanced diet, be it children, be it adults, and be it the new special emphasis on us grandpa age, grandma age people, that our protein needs are higher than before than we thought they were before. In fact, higher than any of us thought they were before. Well, I think beef always has and will continue to have a bad rap. And we're trying to address some of these major nutrition perceptions that exist about beef through foundational research. So research on areas like protein, which are helping nutrition science community, which will then help health professionals understand. When you include more protein into your diet with foods like beef, you may actually improve your health outcomes. So I think some of the research that we're doing is helping break through some of the stereotypes that exist about beef and that's a key part of our nutrition research program. Still ahead on this edition of Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we'll give you an up-close look at another Environmental Stewardship Award-winning operation. And later, we'll see how one Montana feed yard is managing and treating BRD. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Every truck can tow a boat. Every truck can climb a hill. Every truck can haul a trailer. But not everyone can say they're the fastest growing truck brand in America. Guts Glory Ram. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings on new equipment purchases from Caterpillar. Cat is proud to be a sponsor of the NCBA and provide member discounts on our equipment. We've been a partner with the NCBA for a number of years and are excited to offer you, the members, exclusive benefits. NCBA members can save up to $2,000 when you buy or lease a qualifying machine including backhoe loaders, skid steers, and more. Also save an additional $250 on select CAT attachments. Caterpillar is proud to be a sponsor of the NCBA and work with you, the producers, on future equipment purchases. You can go to catresourcecenter.com to learn more about our products and offerings. Saving big money on equipment purchases from Caterpillar is just one of the great deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at beefusa.org. Welcome back. Every day, cattlemen and women care for their land and their animals because they're committed to leaving what they have in better condition than what it was when they received it. This fall, we're highlighting the 2015 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head to Region 5 and the winning operation in Montana. American Fork Ranch sits at the base of the Crazy Mountains in Montana. It was founded in 1882 and later purchased by Colonel Robert Stevens, who went on to become Secretary of the Army. Although American Fork is still owned by the Stevens family, Jed and Annie Evgy manage the day-to-day -day operation of the ranch. We arrived on scene uh, around March 1st, 1998. Um, was asked to come over and, and take over management of the ranch. The Stevens family took us in like family, and uh, we are a big family. We're, we're a team, and uh, everything that we've been able to succeed in has been a team effort. One of the first things Jed and Annie did when they got to American Fork was to get the Stevens family more actively involved in the work of the ranch whenever they came to visit. It was a night and day difference. We were so excited and grateful for the opportunity to finally actually be involved in the ranch and get to know actually how a ranch is run. 
Jed and Annie have worked hard to integrate all of us, and uh, and and that has mattered. You know, so that that you know, our my cousins' kids, my kids, my brothers' kids, all of them have a connection to the ranch that matters. They have been very proactive in engaging different family members and different generations of our respective families, and that's made a huge difference. Grass and water are two priorities at the nearly 26,000-acre American Fork Ranch. They worked with NRCS to add 25 miles of cross-fencing, which divided very large pastures into smaller, more efficient grazing areas. If you ain't got grass and water, you ain't got nothing. We couldn't have these happy cows if there wasn't grass and water. There was several spots on the ranch that was not being utilized, and one of our main sayings on the ranch is, we don't like wasted space or wasted time. When we moved here, the pastures were in very large, um, very large areas, and we cross-fenced them just to make them a little smaller and be better for the cows to graze more evenly, and then we could move them on to the next pasture. These cows and calves are moved every seven days. So this group right here is a Monday group, so every Monday they get moved. But my philosophy on moving them every seven days is it gives that chance and they won't be back into this pasture for 45 days. So that gives this grass a chance not to be totally utilized, but utilized enough that it stimulates it and causes it really makes it healthy. Water development has allowed for better grazing distribution within the pastures. Careful placement of stock tanks in upland pastures also draws the cattle away from sensitive riparian areas. There's a few spots where no matter what you did, the cows didn't want to be up on top of the, the buttes or whatever. So we developed water and put water on top and now the cows have stayed up there. And when we've been able to develop water and put them in tanks, man, the dispersal of these cows has been phenomenal. They've gone places and stay places that the, they've never been on this ranch before. That right there is cleaner water, less soil erosion, less impact on the stream beds and stuff like that. The changes here in the past 12 or so years are just absolutely amazing and very, very impressive. The, the land is much, much healthier now. The nutrient cycle, the water cycle, the energy cycle are all operating just wonderfully out here now. Tremendous improvements. The improved condition of the ranch has benefited not only the cattle, but also the wildlife that thrives on the habitat here. Everyone involved in the American Fork Ranch has a deep reverence for the land and the livestock. The Stevens and Ebgene families are working together to protect and improve all their resources, with Jed and Annie leading the way. They've been the number one reason why this ranch is still going today. We owe so much to them. They've been crucial to this ranch to continue going on, but to continue going on in the best way and to ensure that's gonna continue on for my kids and my cousins, our whole family, to keep going on and in, and in the best way possible with proper use of the land and how we raise the cattle and everything. The working relationship with Jed and Annie and their openness to all of us and our openness to all of them has really uh, been absolutely critical. We don't, we don't worry about the management. We applaud it, we are excited by it, and excited by the collaborative quality of, of uh, what's been created here. I think it's a, um, very important to keep it up. It's, it is a historical ranch in Montana, and it's um, a big history for the Stevens family also, and um, it's important for them to try to keep that going in their own family, and ours too, and we're glad we get to be part of it. Being able to walk out here or drive out here and see good, healthy livestock, good, healthy wildlife, clear running water, and lots of grass, and uh, we as a team work together to succeed in this. Why not join our friends at American Fork Ranch as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association? To find out about all the benefits available to NCBA members, just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. 
Coming up in January of 2016, the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show will take place in San Diego. NCBA President Philip Ellis says if you're in the cattle business, then San Diego will be the place to be in January. Well, come, come join us in San Diego. We, this has become an event that you have to experience. Uh, we have uh, entertainment, a lot of fun. We do work. We educate through the Cattlemen's College. Uh, and, and we also have an opportunity to meet and see thousands of other cattlemen throughout the country. So I would just encourage everybody to join me and my family as we'll be heading to San Diego to the Cattle Industry Convention and get encouraged and revved up by a lot of people uh, in the beef business, understanding the importance of the beef business and celebrating our successes. Why not join me and several thousands of your fellow cattlemen and women in San Diego? To find out more about the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and to get registered now, visit the website beefusa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how one Montana family works to prevent BRD in their feed yard. Plus, we'll check in with the always entertaining Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll have more right after this. No storm is too powerful for New Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. New Holland is the undisputed leader in hay tools. We give farmers a wide range of innovative equipment that increases efficiency and productivity all year round. Because to us, smart means providing a smooth, clean cut with faster dry down, plug free conditioning, and superior bale density. And smart means leaving less hay on the field to feed more livestock in less time. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Beef Quality Assurance is your consumer-friendly story. Becoming BQA certified allows you to share your story and ensure customers that we're responsibly raising a safe, wholesome, and healthy beef supply. The Checkoff-funded BQA program equips you with the best management practices for handling cattle, tending to their health, and taking care of the environment. And now, thanks to a partnership with Beringer Ingelheim, you and your employees can earn a free BQA certification online from September 15th to November 20th. Visit BQA.org today. Bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, is among the most costly health problems in the feeding industry. Outbreaks of the disease rob producers of billions of dollars each year. The cost of managing and treating BRD cattle are a significant concern for cattle feeders like Matt and Dan Vogel, whose family has been feeding cattle in Montana's Yellowstone Valley for more than three generations. The Vogels understand the importance of managing this costly disease, and Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Matt Fleck has more. My grandfather, he started feeding cattle back in the 1950s, was one of the first feedlots in the Elston Valley to feed cattle year round. And then over the decades, uh, my grandpa, father, and uh, uncle have built on at added capacity. Uh, currently, we're about 6,500 head capacity. In the fall, we usually feed a few thousand head of yearlings and then start getting some calves in. And then as they go out in December through February, we'll bring in more calves and feed them through the summer. The Vogels take pride in their work and they recognize the advantage of feeding high quality animals. And although they source many cattle from nearby ranches, they also purchase loads of cattle from sale barns across the region. When the cattle come in, the cattle are taken processed as soon as possible and uh, uh, as we get them worked, you know, we do buy quality cattle and uh, make sure that the health is taken care of as soon as possible and, and they're uh, vaccinated on a, shortly after arrival and then 
cattle are checked in the pens on a daily basis and make sure that the health is, stays good on the cattle. The vaccination part of the program is very important. Prevention and rapid treatment of BRD is critical for cattle feeders like the Vogels. Controlling BRD is a difficult problem, as everybody knows in the feedlot industry and in the cattle industry as a whole. It's our number one health issue, and primarily because we have so many different backgrounds that cattle come from and the way they're prepared uh, to come to a feed yard. Um, so it, it takes a, a management strategy primarily on receiving cattle that's flexible, trying to find out as much uh, about the cattle and their prior history uh, so that they know whether they need to repeat vaccinations, whether they've had any vaccinations before, whether or not they've been weaned, all these kind of factors that play into their immune status. BRD is caused by stress associated with shipping and the spread of bacterial and viral pathogens between commingled cattle. As a result, identifying the symptoms of BRD and treating outbreaks quickly are critical. The control of BRD at the feed yard level is uh, aimed at number one, uh, prevention and number two, at, at treatment. And so cattle especially that are evaluated as being high risk, that is they've been hauled a long way, they've been uh, commingled through f livestock marketing channels, um, uh, bad weather, just been weaned, all those kind of things put, put cattle at higher risk. And so those cattle very often are, are treated metaphylactically with a usually a long-acting antibiotic like Zuprevo to help limit the amount of sickness that they're going to initially see. Following that, then it's a matter of having the management system in place with pen riders uh, to be going through cattle often enough to be able to spot them at the first signs of respiratory disease, get those cattle pulled and treated appropriately. Well, the science look for to find the BRD in your cattle. I uh, look for, you know, their heads down, the droopy ears, snotty noses, they'll have a, sometimes they'll be kind of drooly, having fluid from the lungs coming back up. Uh, you know, when they first arrive, a lot of times you can really tell if uh, you've got the calf standing at the back of the pen and everybody else has come up to the feed bunk, that's a real good sign. Look for cattle that are a little lethargic. Cow-calf producers can help reduce the prevalence of BRD outbreaks by weaning and preconditioning calves prior to sale. Although the Vogels attempt to source cattle of known origin, it's not always possible. Dan Vogel knows from experience that certain classes of cattle come with animal health risks. You take ranch calves that come in walking and bawling that have not been pre-vaccinated, we'll treat right around 15 to 20 percent of those cattle. You take yard cattle that come in that have been exposed to everything, uh, those cattle, you're going to treat anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of those cattle. It's just numbers that have come around uh, with years and years of experience. We'll be back with more from Montana right after this. Stay with us. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune. The feeling of snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Are you gonna do this every time we treat a calf with Zuprivo? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, all right then. Don't let BRD interfere with his performance. Treat him as Zuprivo and get him back to his home pen. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling 
the truth and being real and feeding my family a home cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow Welcome back and thanks for joining us. Let's head back to Montana where reporter Matt Fleck has more on the battle against BRD. Because the health status of calves isn't always known, cattle feeders need an effective treatment option for dealing with BRD outbreaks. Zeprevo tiliparosin, a product from Merck Animal Health, is the newest macrolide available for the treatment and control of BRD. Zeprevo can also be used to treat cattle upon arrival to help prevent outbreaks before they occur. Bactericidal and bacteriostatic are properties of antibiotics uh, that relate to uh, how quickly they kill bacteria. Bacteriostatic means that it slows the growth and so the animal has a chance to get on top of the infection that way. Bactericidal means that it actually kills the bacteria and so Zeprevo has both of those properties and uh, just adds to its effectiveness really in, in, in being a fast acting antibiotic and helping get the cattle back on their feet more quickly. Zuprivo is an antibiotic for rapid and sustained control of BRD. This rapid control helps to get cattle back on feed faster. Those characteristics have made Zuprivo a top choice of cattle feeders. When we find our BRD cattle, we'll treat them with the Zuprivo and we send them anymore, I've been sent them right back to their home pen. And first did that this winter. We sent them home and the next day we'd ride back through and those cattle, they'd be up at the bunk eating where the day before they were at the bottom end of the pen and you could just see a vast improvement in them and seemed to do real well. Fast identification and treatment is a key to effectively limiting the impact of BRD. After sick cattle are identified and pulled for treatment, Zuprivo goes to work quickly, limiting the spread of pathogens and the damage they can cause. The important properties of uh, an antibiotic in, in treating respiratory disease are uh, how quickly they're absorbed, uh, how soon they reach the critical levels where they'll stop bacterial growth, and then how long a duration uh, that they're, they're active for. And so this is a good example where Zuprivo really has a, a unique spot in the market and that it has all of those properties very quickly absorbed, uh, reaches uh, effective levels in the, in the lung within uh, an hour to, to four hours. And so it really stands alone in that regard. The ease of use is another important consideration when selecting a product for BRD treatment. Zuprivo, with its simple-to-follow dosing calculation and easy syringability in nearly all weather conditions, helps producers ensure they're dosing animals properly. This translates into lower costs, reduced labor, and ultimately increased profitability. Dosing compliance with antibiotics is, is critical uh, because if we're, say, estimating the the body weight of cattle or we're rounding up the dose volume that's required, uh, then we're tending to either underdose or overdose. Underdosing, of course, is going to give us a, a lower efficacy, uh, a lower success rate in treatment. Uh, overdosing is uh, expensive, and so we don't want to be on either side of that. So the more accurate we can be uh, in that dosing level, the the better, better it is for animal and uh, owners. Suprevo has been well received by animal health professionals across the country. The ease of use and bactericidal action of Zuprivo make it a top choice among feedlot managers. Zuprivo has been really exciting out in the field. Uh, the producers that I've talked to that have used it, uh, both from a treatment perspective as well as a metaphylactic perspective, have actually been very uh, positive. Uh, they, uh, from a treatment perspective, they're actually seeing quicker responses. Uh, and then from a metaphylactic perspective, we're actually seeing the product work in a more consistent and a longer time frame. So they're having a lot less repulls out in the feed yard. 
Because cattle treated with Suprevo are spending less time in the sick pen suffering from BRD and more time at the feed bunk, they're helping producers bottom line. Suprevo is just one of many animal health solutions offered by Merck Animal Health. Those solutions also extend to technical expertise and a variety of easily accessible resources. You know, we ride through the cattle every day looking for the respiratories and when we pull, our first line of defense now is uh, we use the Zuprivo. Reporting from Vogel Feeders in Ballantyne, Montana, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on Zuprivo and other available products from Merck Animal Health, visit usa.zuprivo.com. When we come back, it's time for another visit with our friend Baxter Black. Stay with us. Sure, cattle bring in the profits, but Case IH equipment helps you do everything else. Beef Quality Assurance is your consumer-friendly story. Becoming BQA certified allows you to share your story and ensure customers that we're responsibly raising a safe, wholesome, and healthy beef supply. The Checkoff-funded BQA program equips you with the best management practices for handling cattle, tending to their health, and taking care of the environment. And now, thanks to a partnership with Beringer Ingelheim, you and your employees can earn a free BQA certification online from September 15th to November 20th. Visit BQA.org today. Sure, cattle bring in the profits, but Case IH equipment helps you do everything else. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun delivery system, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Playing hurt is expected in the cowboy world. It's part of the cowboy mentality. Dave had a three-year-old colt in training. Dave's a bit of an eclectic cowboy. He paints eggs and he likes Yoko Ono's music and he's read Jack Kerouac's book, On the Road. So it was not unusual to find him in the round pen wearing shorts and Birkenstocks and throwing an English saddle on the colt. Sometimes horses disguise their resentment of a horse trainer's smug arrogance by cooperating. Other days, they just say, stick it in your ear. The colt bucked him out of his Birkenstocks over his head and into the fence, and Dave found himself on the ground, hip-locked. His knee worked, but he could not lift his left leg forward. Walking was sort of a step, shuffle, stumble, slide gait. But regardless, over the next three days, he helped his neighbor gather cows. But he was handicapped, of course. You know, he had, to, he had to get a stool to get up on his horse, and of course, a potty break was out of the question. Well, Saturday came with no improvement, but he was adjusting. And though he could still not lift his leg, he could bend over. So when Uncle Herman called and asked if he would shoe his horse, Dave said, Sure, just bring him on over. Well, Dave had gotten around to the offside hind leg and he was holding the hoof in his hands. The horse began leaning his huge haunch on Dave's back, crushing him. He slowly collapsed as 1,200 pounds pressed down and slid along his spine. Dave said he heard three little clicks like a grandfather's clock. 
he crumpled and rolled, and then without thinking, rose up and stepped away, cured. <laughs> hey, I believed him, but I believe Moses parted the Red Sea too. I've heard of equine chiropractory, but not exactly in that context. In conclusion, Dave answered the classic question, is there a doctor in the horse? This is Baxter Black. <laughs> With apologies from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always appreciate your good old fashioned horse sense. Now, a reminder, if you're a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, you have the opportunity to read the National Cattlemen. It's a monthly publication filled with the latest cattle industry news, information, and education that will keep you up to date in your own cattle operation. It's a free benefit just for members of NCBA. So not, why not join today? Just give us a call, that's 1-866-USA-BEEF, or visit the website beefusa.org. Don't go away, we'll have more right after this. I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. We use Triangle on the cows because it's been safe and effective and it's done us a good job. We're asking these cows to do more, so that has been a change. We have had just phenomenal results and we just don't, we have very, very little loss. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Set sail for San Diego and the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun that can't be beat. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, and there will be a special event held on the historic USS Midway. It's the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, January 27th through 29th in San Diego. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. The Peterson Farm Brothers believe all cattlemen and women should take part in the Beef Quality Assurance Program. Beef Quality Assurance is a beef checkoff funded program that helps educate producers how to provide a more safe, wholesome, and nutritious product for consumers. BQA encourages proper handling of cattle as well as proper vaccination techniques and much more. It's very important that we in this industry are, are providing what consumers want and that is safe, high quality, wholesome, well-produced beef. We really encourage everyone out there to get BQA certified. Join the team today at BQA.org. Welcome back. The Beef Quality Assurance Program provides cattle producers with the tools and training necessary to assure animal health and well-being, as well as provide a safe, quality product. Now, between now and November, you can take advantage of a free online BQA certification, compliments of our friends at Beringer Ingelheim. Just visit the website, bqa.org, and sign up today. It's an outstanding opportunity to do the right thing for your business and the right thing for our industry. Believe it or not, we're less than four months away from the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in San Diego, California. And it's not too early to mark your calendar and begin making your plans. We asked several producers to tell us what they're looking forward to in beautiful San Diego. NCBA has put together a tremendous program, uh, Martina McBride and, and some other entertainment, some, some uh, tours of some of the ships, so there's, there's a, a good mix of things to do business-wise and some things to do for socialization, so it's a great deal. I really, the uh, concert with Martina McBride, I think that, that'll be really good, it's enjoyable, and then the other thing is, we, it's like a reunion, you know, I get to see a lot of friends and from all over the country uh, that come, and it's, it's like a you know, you get to see friends, it's a great gathering, but I think the concert and then 
you know, the meetings themselves are very important. To me, the biggest value of convention, uh, wherever it is, is the fact that we get to network with other producers, we get to talk about policies, we get to connect with people that know what's happening in Washington, D.C., and give our own input from the grassroots about those policies and what we feel about them and how they should be handled. Look forward to being in San Diego to see all our friends and industry leaders. Uh, man, what a great gathering it always is, and uh, good things happen when good folks get together. Set your sails for San Diego, January 27th through the 29th, 2016. It's a gathering you won't want to miss. Find out all you need to know and get registered now at the website beefusa.org. It's time now for this week's legacy photos, submitted by farming and ranching families from around our country. Let's take a look. You can send us your pictures of your farm or ranch by visiting our website, cattleman cattleman.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Next week on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll take you behind the scenes of live cattle exports to Ecuador, plus a closer look at an award-winning Nevada ranch, and see how John Deere round balers are getting the job done in Virginia. All that and much more, including another visit with our friend Baxter Black next week. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week right here on RFD TV.